Hey everybody, uh, can you guys uh, hear me and see my screen? Yes. 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 All right. So we will continue with uh, the fractions today. So far, we learned how to simplify fractions and also how to multiply and divide them. And also talk about converting between mixed numbers and improper fractions. Uh, so today we're going to learn um, how to add and subtract, or at least uh, start uh, or introduce the process of adding and subtracting fractions. That involves something called the LCD, or the least common denominator. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to introduce that. And uh, the next class, we're going to talk more about adding and subtracting uh, fractions and mixed numbers. So let's start with uh, something called adding like fractions. Adding and subtracting like fractions. So fractions, as you know, um, we have a numerator and the denominator and a denominator. And when we add them, when we add them, we make sure we have the same, when we add or subtract, we make sure we have the same denominator. That's why we call them like fractions. We must have the same number here before we can add or subtract. If you don't have the same number, you don't add, we have to do something else. We have to change the fractions into new ones with the same number here, the denominator. Okay, they need, they need to have a common denominator. It's pretty simple to add if you have the same denominator. It stays the same, okay? You don't add this. You just add the tops or subtract them. So two plus one in this case, which is three over three. And what's three over three? One. That's right, just one. one. So we always want to uh, simplify your fractions. Simplify your answer to the lowest terms, for example, here, just one. Same thing applies to subtraction. Let's say you have five. Maybe eight and five here, and probably let's say two. Okay, so again, before adding or subtracting, make sure you have the same denominator here. If it's the same, that's good. You leave it the same. Same here, you don't add them. Just keep it the same. And just subtract the tops. Maybe six over five, that's your answer. Try to reduce it if possible. Nothing goes into six over five. Uh, what kind of fraction is this? Everybody? Improper fraction. Improper fraction, that's right. We can write this as a type of number. A mixed number. Exactly. Okay, so what's the mixed number? Five into six. One. Okay. One, one, five. one five. That's right. One and one fifth mm -hmm. as a mixed number. So again, these are called like fractions. Uh, six. When, when you have like fractions, we can uh, add them and subtract. Even if you have more than more than two, you see you have one third, uh, four over three, and maybe two thirds. Same way, as long as you have the same denominator, all these are like fractions. They share the same denominator. We can combine all of them, plus and plus and one plus four plus two. If you add all this, you get seven over three. Again, improper fraction, three into seven twice, and the remainder is one. Okay, so that's uh, basically how you deal with uh, like fractions. Um, <clears throat> you may also have subtraction and addition, let's say of, uh, say four over maybe seven minus, one seven plus, let's say two. You have a mix here of it, subtraction and addition. 
Luckily, we have the same denominator. So again, we're going to keep that the same. And we're just going to combine the tops in the same order and operations here. 4 minus 1 plus 2. According to the, op uh, the order of operations, subtraction and, and addition, they are done left to right. So we're going to do this one first, then this one. So that's 3 plus 2. I mean, over 7. That's 5 over 7 which is proper and simplified. Okay, it's very simple with, um, with like fractions, okay? With like fractions with the same denominator. But if the, the denominators are different, let's say you have maybe five here, plus maybe uh, four. So we cannot add these two right away, okay? You might seem like the easiest to do just to add these and add these, it does not work. That's not like multiplication when we multiply these together and these. So do not do this, it's very wrong. Um, even though it seems easy and convenient, that's not right. We're gonna learn how to make these the same, okay? We need to make these numbers the same in order to be able to add them like this. So to do that, we're going to talk a little bit about something called the least common multiple, which later will, will be used, um, or will be called the, later, the least common uh, denominator. So for now, it's, it's called what it is, least common multiple. <clears throat> so let's see how, how that works. Um, Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the least common All right. <clears throat> um, the least common multiple. Common multiple. So if you take any two numbers, for example, two and three, what we mean by the least common multiple is uh, the first number that appears to be common when we do the multiples of both. For example, if you take two, the next multiple of two is four, then the following multiple is six, following multiple is eight, and so on. Basically, we keep adding two, two to every top. These are called multiples, okay? Multiples of this number. Then you go to the other number, three, and you do the same thing, the multiples. What is the first multiple of three? Nine. First multiple, you, just, you keep adding, basically multiplying. Oh, I mean six. Oh, so we have three. Oh, that's right. So three, add three, that's six. Add three again, that's nine. Add three, that's 12. So you take the number, you multiply by one, by two, by three, and so on. You keep adding that number to the, the sum every time. Uh, as you can see here, we have six and six as a common. Common multiple, uh, the first or the least one, the smallest one that appears is six. If you keep going, there's gonna be more other common numbers, but this one is the least or the first one. So six, eight, the next one it is 10, and then 12. As you can see, that's also a common multiple, but this one is the least. The smallest or the least is six. So for any two numbers, you do the same thing. Just basically take multiples of the two. Let's say uh, four and six. Okay, so let's do the same thing here. What is the first multiple of four? Eight. Eight. Eight, then? Twelve. Twelve. Sixteen. Sixteen, and so on. Fifteen. Do the same thing with six, so we have six, then? Twelve. Twelve. Next. 18. That's right, 18 and then? 24. Do we have a common, a least common multiple yet? Yes, 12. Right, 12. 
So that's the least common multiple of these two numbers. And later we're gonna call this the, the common denominator because these are usually here in the denominator. For example, if you have this one here and this one here, these are not the same, we can add. We have to, to find a common one. We find basically this. Uh, speaking of that example, let's actually find a common multiple of five and four. Because before we add fractions, you have to have the same number here. For example, just like this. If you don't have, you can't add, you need to make the same denominator, uh, the same denominator by finding the common multiple. So let's take four, five and four, and just do the multiple. Can you guys tell what's the common multiple already of five and four? 20. No, do you know that, what would the common multiple of these be, five and four? <laughs> four. Is it 10? Um, okay, you, you can't get 10 from, you may get 10 from here, but not from here. So the common multiple is basically the common denominator. So if you think of, about it that way, you probably figure it out. What is the common denominator for five and four? I think it's 20. It is 20, that's right. It is 20. So the common multiple is the same as the common denominator when we talk with, about fractions. So let's say you, you can't see why it's 20. This is why it's 20, it came from here. So let's do multiples of these, five then. Five, 10. 10? 10, 15, 15 20, 25. All right, so these are multiples of five. Multiples of three. Now let's do the same thing with four. Once you reach a common number, then you stop. That's your least common multiple. And later it will be used as the least common denominator. So four, first common, first okay. multiple. Okay. 12. 12. 16 and 20. That's right. As you can see, we reached a common number, so we can stop. That's why we call this the least common multiple, or in this case, it will also be the least common denominator for these fractions. And let's see how to use that uh, in order to be able to add these. So these can't be added because this is different. So first you find a common number for these. We found it, the least one is this. If you keep going, you're gonna get other numbers, for example, uh, uh, you're gonna get uh, 40 and other numbers that are common, but we wanna deal with the, le the least one, the smallest possible. So, so let's see how to add these now. Okay, so we couldn't add them. So we found the common denominator or the common multiple. What do you call the common? Denominator or multiple. Uh, we refer to it as the LCM or the LCD. D for denominator or M here for multiple. All right, so let's change these into new fractions with the same number here. That number will be the LCD. So LCD equals 20. Um, let me rewrite the fractions again. So what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna change both of these. We want both of these to be, or to become 20. Um, let me actually go back a little bit. You want both of these to be new fractions with the same number here, which is the LCD. So I'm gonna put 20 here and 20. But we have to change this proportionally. So we wanna go from here to here. How do you change five into 20? Well, how many times does five go into 20? Four times. Four times, so in order to change this denominator into 20, you have to multiply by four. You also have to multiply by the same number up here yeah. by four. That way, that way you get a 
what we call an equivalent fraction. So this turns into two times 48. Okay. So these two fractions are pretty much the same. It's the same ratio, same division. We call them equivalent fractions. <clears throat> so these two are equivalent. If you divide two by five, it's exactly the same as h by 20. The reason again, we're changing them because we want to make the denominator the same. Let's do the same thing here. How do you turn five into 20, you times it by? Everybody? Four. Four into 20, you times it by? Five times. Five, five, that's right. Also here by? Five times. Five. The same number here and here, you get a new fraction. So this fraction turns into five. These are equivalent. And if you take any fraction, any numbers, A over B, real numbers, whatever numbers it might be, if you times the two by the same number, for example, by C, by C, it's still the same fraction. As long as you do what you, um, you multiply both top and bottom by the same number. Multiplication, not addition. Addition will not result this, uh, with the same thing. So any fraction, can be multiplied by the same number, whatever number n, for example, and you get a new fraction, a n over b n. These are we call equivalent, okay, equivalent fractions, um, as we saw here. So it times by four on four, five on five has to be the same number. Sorry, I don't understand. All right, don't worry about this part. It just means we times by the same number. Okay. The same number, but how I can. We get equivalent uh, fractions. Okay, so we call these. Can you do another one of those? Mm -hmm. Yep, we're going to do a few. So we'll call that. <clears throat> so now, as you can see, we turn these fractions into new ones with the same denominator. Can we now add these two? Yes. That's right. So, what's the denominator? 20. Let's write 20 and the top would be 13. 13. Let's write 13. 8 plus 5. 8 plus 5. 13 over 20 can't reduce its proper. That's your answer. So that's the reason why we uh, find a common multiple or common denominator. When we have different denominators, so we want to make them the same before we can add. Let's do another example. So this works for both addition or subtraction. You, you only reduce when it's improper, right? Well, um, you reduce when it when it's possible to to reduce when you have a number that can go into both. Okay. So we, we only turn it into a mixed number if it's improper. Okay. This okay. It's proper. Um, okay. Right. So let's take another example here. Let's say you have. Maybe it's one six, but actually five over four minus one six. Can we subtract these two fractions right away? Can we subtract these right away, like? You did earlier in the beginning, or do we do something else? You got it. No, we can't. We have to find the least common factor. Mm -hmm. That's right. So denominator. <laughs> that's right, denominator. Because these are different, we can't subtract. We have to find a common one. And again, if you can't see what the denominator is, we use this method of the multiples until you find a common number. Uh, so what is the common uh, multiple or denominator here for four and six? 20. That's right, we already did it here. You can see four and six. So the first or the LCD is 12. Okay, you wanna find the LCD first, which is 12. 
Okay, so what do we do with the LCD now? Or what do we do with the fractions? We're gonna turn both these denominators into what? Into 12. Exactly, we're gonna turn them into that common number. Once we have the same number, we can subtract. Um, but what happens to this fraction to turn it into a new fraction with 12? It times it by? Uh, four multiplied for three, right? That's right, Multiply by three in here. Three? Also three, always the same number here. So four times three is 12, four times three will be 15. Yeah. What about this one? We times it by to get to 12. Two. Two and also here is two. So one times two is two. Good, so at this point, you can see we have the same number. Now these are like fractions or equivalent, okay? And also, Call them uh, like. Actually, these are equivalent because even though the denominator is different, the ratios are the same. These are like because they have the same uh, denominator. All right, what do we do now? What's the denominator of the result? 12. That's right. This always stays the same. You just subtract it too. So I have to take away two, that's 13 over 12. Try to reduce if possible. Nothing goes into 12 and 13, but we can write this out. Mm -hmm. One and one 12. One and one, yeah. One, one. Exactly. one and one 12. 12 into 13 once, 12 here. The remainder is one. So that's the idea of the common denominator. If you can't see it right away, that's fine. Feel free to do this. If you see it or with experience, you could probably just uh, figure it out quickly, but make sure it's the least. Uh, you wanna use the least one, not something uh, bigger because you want your fractions to be as small as possible because they're easy to deal with. You can do it usually like quick. You can also, you don't need to simplify them that much when you get your answer. So the whole idea of um, <clears throat> adding and subtracting fractions um, revolves around this. So you check this. If it's the same, you're good to go. Easy. If it's not the same, you need to make that the same. So that's when you need to find an LCD. Um, <clears throat> let's see if we can do some other problems here. So we did four and six, five and four. Let's take a couple, some maybe uh, other denominators we haven't done yet. Uh, let's say five over nine. And we wanna add that to maybe, let's put six here or maybe three. All right, three is good enough, one third. Okay, so again, can't add, we have different denominators. Can you guys see what the, the denominator is, the common one? No. Three. Okay, so we have five or nine plus uh, one third. No one is easy. What is it again? Three, the common denominator. Mm, three, but... Um, but you do nine and three, the first multiple of nine is uh, yeah. 18. 18. seven. So you don't have three here. Yeah. Then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah, it's nine. Okay. So now we have mm -hmm. multiple is. Mm -hmm. Multiple of three. Six. Then. Nine. All right, do we have a common number now? No. We do? Yes, yes, nine, nine, yeah. It's instead of 18, this is easier. Nine and nine is first. But professor, if I can do like with three, three times three and leave the nine like that, I cannot do that? Uh, yeah, you can do that eventually. That's basically you, uh, Picking nine as a common denominator. That's why you didn't change this. You don't want to change this yet. 
Oh, okay. That's, nine is the least. If you continue, you get nine. Twelve, we get fifteen. We get eighteen. We get eighteen, but that's not the least. Eighteen is a larger number. So the common one, the first one that's common between all these numbers is nine. So that's the least. LCD is eighteen, not. I mean, it's nine, nine, not eighteen. Because you want to deal with uh, smaller fractions. So now we're going to turn this into new fractions with what denominator? What would the denominator be here again? Nine. Nine, right? Nine. Nine goes into nine how many times? One. One. So it's like multiplying by one. You don't have to do two, but it's maybe makes sense if you do it this way. And this to turn into nine times by? Three. Three and three. Finally, so we have five times one is five, one times three, three. That's uh, eight over nine. That's proper to reduce, that's the finest. The more you do this, the, the, the more you get used to the LCD. Um, Sometimes you can see it right away, you don't have to do this. If you, especially if you know the multiplication table, that helps you figure this out quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can use 27. Nine. Um, Nine times three. I can use 27. Uh, but it's larger than you want to use. Uh, it's, it's not the least. Oh, okay, it's the least number. It's not the least. You want to use nine. So even 18 is not good. Even 18. 18 is a common number, but it's not good. If you keep going here, you'll see 27. If you keep going here, you'll also see 27. So 18, you have uh, 21, right? Mm -hmm. It comes up to 21, 24, then 27. But this is a big number. It's going to make your work harder here. You have to simplify. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the same result anyway. Yeah, um, it will be the same result, but it will take you long. So the LCD is not always this times this. It doesn't always work. For example, your four times six is 24, but it's not the least. It is a common denominator, but it's not the least. 12 is better. Here, nine times three is 27. It's much higher than nine and 18. Um, the only way you could multiply these is if they're both prime. If you guys remember prime numbers, uh, let's say seven over um, five, you want to add that to, let's say one third. Only if both of them are prime, then the LCD is this times this. Okay, so what is the LCD here in this case? Uh, 15. It's five times three. Only because this is prime, we can't break it down. It's not composite. It's also not composite. It is 15. Because both 5 okay. are prime. You both five and three are prime. Um, okay, so you can use this, do the, uh, the multiples, but the shortcut is if both are prime, so the LCD is 15. Another trick is if you look at the two numbers, see if the, the smaller one goes into the higher one. If it does, then the higher one is the LCD. Okay. Three and nine, three goes into nine. Therefore, this is the LCD itself. Here, four doesn't go into six evenly. So six is not the common denominator. Instead, it's 12, you do the multiples. None of them, is, uh, they're not prime. So the LCD is not four times six because they're not prime. Um, let me give you another example. Let's say one, <clears throat> seven, you wanna subtract it. Uh, Subtract from it, let's say one over uh, five. 
can we, what is the LCD? Can we, uh, can we multiply those two to get the LCD? Yes. Yes, why is that? Five and seven. Five and seven are what? what kind of numbers? Seven. Yeah, seven prime. Prime. Right. They are prime, right? That's right. So this is prime, this is prime. So no need to do the multiples. No need to do seven, 14, and so on, five, mm -hmm. 10. It's longer instead. Mm -hmm. So seven and times five. That's right. You can do it right away. You don't even have to write it. Just go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. So to multiply these, so the LCD again uh, is 15. So we just need to times this by three to get 15 by three and this one by five and five. 21 and five, so you get 15, add these two 26. We can change this into a mixed number. These also have this, uh, so they also is this because both of these are prime. We can multiply them, not always, for example here. So you can say, so we're going to turn both of them into 35. So we're going to times this by 5, times this by 5, and here by 7, by 7. So 1, 5, and, uh, and 7. So this stays the same, 5 minus 7. I don't know if we did the signs yet. This is negative two. Don't worry about why it's negative two for now. We're gonna talk about the science in the future. Yeah, in a couple of classes we're gonna explain in detail these science. So that's basically how you find the LCD is three ways. The first thing you wanna do is um, see if they're prime. If both are prime, that's easy. Just times the two, that's your LCD. If they're different, see if one of them goes into the other. If the smaller one goes into the higher one, then the higher one is the LCD. You just need to change the other one to look like this. For example, nine, we have three, so we gotta multiply by three to make a nine. Other than that, <clears throat> um, you can always use the multiples. Um, four, six, and so on, like we did here. Or again, if you know the multiplication table, you can figure that out right away. So it's not always this times this, not always. Only works well if you have prime numbers. Okay, everybody, makes sense. Any uh, questions? Where did the two come from? Where did the two? Uh, I'll ex like I said, we'll explain this in the future. We have five minus seven. We'll talk about these in detail, signs in the future. But don't worry about it for now. Uh, <clears throat> there's another example here. If you look at these two. First of all, can we multiply them to get the the least common denominator? Yes. No, can you, if you multiply them, do you get the least common denominator, the smallest? Are they like seven and five, we can multiply them? No, no, no. No, these are composite. Mm -hmm. you multiply them, you gotta get a large LCD, uh, not LCD, large common denominator. Not the least, it's gonna be a larger number. Uh, what is the second thing you try? Six is uh, 18. That does six go into 18? I multiply six, six, six times three. That's right, if six goes into 18, that's good. So, what is the common denominator? I'm, I'm sorry, can't you, you break it up? Common denominator. Better again, I'm sorry. What is the common denominator here? 18. 18, so if one goes into the other, so the higher one is the LCD. LCD equals 18. because six goes into 
it only if this goes into this. If it doesn't go into it, this would not be the you know, the, the least common denominator. So the LCD is um, 18, and then, so you got to times this by. So this one is already 18. To turn this into 18, we times it by? Three. Three, also three. No need to even change this one. It's like times one times one, no big deal. So five, 18, minus three over 18. At this point, we can say 18 and two over 18, which is one ninth if you divide by two. Um, okay, so there's three ways you can figure out the LCD pretty quickly. Let's see if we can do another example. And all right, so first of all, can we multiply these two to get the LCD? No. No, because? They are um, uh, com prime. composite. Because they're not prime, that's right? Because yeah. Unless they are of prime like five and three, seven, five. That's the first thing you check. So they're not prime, so we can't multiply them. Does, uh, uh, let me want to use another number here. <clears throat> Instead of four, uh, let me use 10 here. Okay, so we can't times them because they're not prime. Can we use 10 as a common denominator? No. Because? They are prime. No, they're not prime. Both of them are not prime. doesn't go into 10 evenly. Exactly. Four does not go into 10. So first of all, we can't times them because they're not prime. Second, the smaller one doesn't go into the, the higher one. Unlike this one, this was okay because six goes into 18. Here, four does not go into 10. Therefore, the higher one is not the LCD. So the last thing to do is to figure out the LCD. If you can see it right away, that's good. If not, you can do the multiples. What do you think the common denominator here is? Thing is a common. What is it? But 40. 40. Um, okay, let's, let's do the multiples here. See what we get. Four, All right? 10, I'm 20, I'm sorry. 20, that's right. 20 is, is smaller, so 10, uh, I mean 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And here you can say 10 and 20. So that's your least common denominator. If you multiply them, you'll get 40, which is higher. It's still gonna be the same result at the end, but it's gonna take you longer to multiply and simplify. 10, as you can see, is not common. And so it's gotta be the multiples of the two. Now we're just going to times this by uh, 5 by 5, 2 and 2. So this is 10 over 20 plus 2 over 10. I mean 2 over 20. Same denominator, so we can say 12 over 20. Can you reduce or simplify this? You can simplify it. By? By two, at least by two. So this reduce, or even higher, there is a higher number that goes into, into two, both. Four. Four, that's right, four into 12. Three. Eight. Okay, four into 20. Five. Very good, so we have five. As the simplest answer, it's also proper. That's basically how you do your um, <coughs> fractions, add and subtract. You gotta figure out the LCD. It's not too hard to find. Um, let's, uh, do you guys have any more questions on this? Is that clear, all this? Okay. Any questions, everybody? So this is basically how so you add and subtract fractions. In the next class, we're gonna see how to add and subtract mixed numbers and whole numbers and fractions all together. Mix them up, okay? This is good enough for today. Um,